Today we will be reading out of the, uh, well, we'll be reading out of a lot of the scripture, but uh, our, our focal passage will be in the Gospel of Matthew, ch- chapter 20, verse 28. <clears throat> it's hard to believe that, that this is our last week in our Back to the Basics sermon series. I mean, well, some of you might not think, maybe some of you think it's been too long. But uh, so far we've covered uh, prayer, we've covered spending time in in the Word and Scripture, our confession, and today we're going to be talking about our service, or said a different way would be serving others. The truth is, is that we probably could do sermons on being going back to the basics uh, for three months, you know, because there's so much that that there's still left to be said. There's so much more, so many good and profitable things that we can do in our Christian walk, things that we can commit to. And I pray that our time together over the past few weeks are, will serve kind of as a springboard in our walk and that, that you'll spend more time exploring other ways to serve, other, other things to do, other topics like the Sabbath, like giving, like communion. I mean, there's so many things. One thing that I do know for sure is spending time with Jesus is profitable. Amen? And as we've already discussed, that prayer and the scripture are things that we should be committing ourselves to every day. And not just because that we need to check off some religious uh, box off of our righteous to-do list, not just something to, to say that we did, but because that's where Jesus is. That's where we reconnect with our Savior and our King. That's where we get the fuel that's necessary to go and to do our good deeds to serve others. And serving others by trading our time, our treasure, so that others might experience the love of Christ. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Our kingdom-minded service. What do you think about when you think about serving others? Is there an image that comes to mind? I mean, if I asked you to, to pray about trading your time, your talent, your treasure, in order to serve and to bless others, what would that look like? Now, I imagine a lot of you would simply be thinking about, you know, adding a little money to the box, uh, giving a little bit more, maybe maybe doing a service project. And if if anybody has uh, ever been on a mission trip or known somebody that's been on a mission trip, then you know that it's it's a possible way to serve by, by serving somebody in some capacity. Brothers and sisters, there are hundreds of ways that we can serve others. And while it might be beneficial use of time, I'm not going to list all of them. Today, we're going to spend our time on the biblical heart behind serving others. We're going to look at the motivation behind the action, which I believe in the long run would serve us better than some bulletproof list of of things that we can do. Because ultimately, how we serve and where we serve is going to come from our heart, not from a list, in in order for it to be effective. And so with that in mind, our first thought is, what would Jesus do? I mean, how many of you remember those, those bracelets? Do you remember those bracelets? How many of you had some of those bracelets? How many still have some of those bracelets? 
Now, some of you younger folk might not know. Some of you older folk might not have cared, not paid attention. But I'll talk about that a little bit. But that phrase actually goes back hundreds of years. And was really, it was first employed in sermons by the great preacher Charles Spurgeon. So it's not exactly a new idea, but it was kind of refreshed in the 90s when there was this grassroots movement um, that came out of a youth group in Holland, Michigan. The youth leader uh, was trying to figure out a simple way for her students to, to remember the phrase. So they made the bracelets, WWJD. Of course, little did she know that, that those bracelets would be, become a worldwide phenomenon and, and spark a generation to consider what would Jesus do? Now, as I reconsider that phrase today and, and how it pertains to serving others, I want to invite you all to turn with me to our focal passage of Scripture in Matthew 20, verse 28 where Jesus spoke these words. God's word says, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. The Son of Man didn't come to what? To be served. The king didn't come to be served. The creator of creation of all creation came not to be served, but to serve others. Christ came to trade his life, his energy, his time, everything that he had, so that others like you and I could have life. And better than that, we could have eternal life. And as we follow him and we learn to live like him, we're called to give our lives like he did so that others can experience life in Christ. And Jesus, he answers a lot of our objections through the Gospels. Now you might be thinking, well, what about the people I don't like? I'm not really going to serve them. We talked about this a couple weeks ago, right? Remember about the prayer when we talked about prayer? In Matthew 5, 44, he said, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And some of you are still praying for that flower pot to hit, fall on their heads. And what about my neighbors? What about the people I don't even know? Jesus would probably have you read the story of the Good Samaritan that's found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. And okay, so what about my day-to-day living? What if I'm having a bad day? You ever have one of those? What if I'm having a bad day or, or just a hard time? What if I simply can't function and do anything meaningful For anybody. I can't do anything for myself. How can I do anything to serve anybody else? So a couple of things come to mind. The first one being something that Jesus said to the Apostle Paul again in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 through and 10. Where he said, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I want you guys to write that verse down, circle it. I want you to read that this week. I want you to read that when things are falling apart, when life is is just too tough for you. 
When you don't feel like you're enough. Paul says that he's going to brag even more in his weakness. And the reason for that is because it gives all the glory to Jesus. So on one hand, be confident that in, and even in your weaknesses, God can use what you have to offer. Because just like that Jerry Maguire movie, he completes us. God can use what you have to offer. All of us. Nobody is too broken for the great healer. The truth is, is even if you can send a text, you're able to send someone an encouraging note. If you can make a phone call, if you can get on the internet, you can send a message to somebody that might lift their day. There are a ton of ways that are made available for us through technology. In other, for us, in other in ways for us to serve and to love one another. What would Jesus do? The second thing that comes to mind is something that the Apostle Paul says in his second letter to in Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 6 through 8. When we talk about sowing and reaping. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth. In his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheer cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound in every good work. Now, Usually we talk about this verse when we when we talk about about money, about giving. But I think that this principle applies to to serving others also. I believe that sowing and reaping are God's principles that play out in a lot of different areas in our life. And I know for a fact that God loves a cheerful giver. I know that he'll give us all that we need so that in every situation we can abound in every good work. Everything that we do, if we are in Christ, if we are giving ourselves freely and, and you know, with our hearts, with the, the right heart, then he's going to bless it. For all of those that have you been here long enough, you know That I don't stand up here and I don't tell you the things that we need. I wish we would have a men's group. I wish I had this. I wish I had that. Because people would tend to go like this. <sighs> okay. He wants it. Nobody else is volunteering, so I guess I'll do it. Been, been a part of too many of those. Those aren't blessed. It's got to come from the heart. It's got to, people that serve each other, that serve the kingdom, has got to be led. They have to feel it. Otherwise, whatever they're doing isn't going to be blessed. I've seen it hundreds of times in, in my walk. And when we do that, then he does Give us everything that we need in every situation so that we can do his work. I mean, that's the economy of the kingdom of God. It's bountiful. It's plentiful. And even when you don't feel like you're, you're enough or you have enough, God works through you. All you have to do is offer yourself as a living sacrifice. All you have to do is, is to give your heart in service to him. Reference Romans 12 too, 
Read that later. So what would Jesus do? He would, and he did, offer himself, not for just one or two people, not for just the Jewish people, but for all mankind. He gave himself fully to the work of the Father that, sent, that, that he sent him to do. And when we're called to follow his example, it leads us to our third point, that we're made for more. Do you ever have that feeling that you were made for more than this, the life that you're in? Do you ever feel like, like, like you're stuck in this mediocre uh, life that, that, you, that you daydreamed to, you know, about escaping from? That there's something more. What if that feeling is a real feeling? Maybe, it, maybe it's not something that, that you're bored with, with your life, but maybe it's something deep inside of you that's been planted by God. What if that's so? What if, what if that, that thing is something that God wants you to do? Let's look in Ephesians 2, chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 10, where it tells us, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. There you go. We're created in Christ to do what? To do good works. We're supposed to be working for the kingdom. Work that God the Father prepared in advance. You're created for more than mediocrity. You're created for good works, for divine works, for kingdom life. To experience it here on the other side of serving others. How big is that? Think about that. You were created to do kingdom works. Now, I know that there are times in our lives when we don't feel like we're worthy of anything. We got no reason to be approaching the throne of God. We don't have anything to offer him. We think that we have to give him this perfect sacrifice. perfect life I have known good people that have not served in churches because they didn't think they were good enough they didn't think that they that, 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 that their life was clean enough oh my goodness if that were the case, I'd, I would have never stood up behind a pulpit. I never would have walked in at church. God overcomes all of that. That's why Jesus is, came. And his plan for us is, is to serve. We have to do like the Gospel of Luke says in, in Luke 9, verse 62. It says, Jesus saith unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Once we come into the service, once we become Christians, and we start reaping and sowing, once we start feeling the love of Christ, it's our job not to look back at where we were, not to look back at our, our past failures, our sinful life, but it's to look forward. And know that Jesus is there. That's our path. That's our road to hoe. You have to get into it. You have to try. We have to start small. Maybe you can, your, your serving can start with a donation. 
Maybe you do- donate some food to the to the, the pantry. Maybe maybe you start serving down in the kids ministry once a month. Maybe you start somewhere, somewhere small. But know that you're created for more. This little church has got so much to do. We are an untapped resource for the kingdom. So many things that we can be doing outside these walls. And we're just looking for the workers. We're just looking for the people that are committed. Something like the handbell ministry. Something like the pavilion. But even bigger than those. How about the neighbors across the street that don't know Jesus? How about the neighbor that lives two doors down from you? Brothers and sisters, we are all made for more than mediocrity. Now, we've covered a lot of ground these past few weeks, and I hope and I pray that it gives you a springboard. At the very least, I hope that you're going to find regular time to pray. Regular time to read the word every day or, or at least several times during the week. I pray that you'll feel confident and empowered in confessing your sins and pray with other believers. And finally, I hope that you'll find a meaningful place to serve. Not yourself, but to serve others. And I trust that in serving others, you're going to experience new ways, fuller ways, the love of God that's made available through Christ and through the fellowship of believers. As Christ has loved, we are also loved. And we're supposed to love others. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 says, Hereby we perceive we, we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren and sisters. A life of faith is a marathon. It's not a sprint. You don't have to do everything all at once. Start small and build. Just make sure that you start somewhere. Somewhere. God created us with good works in mind. And, and at very least, our purpose on this earth is to serve others and to fulfill God's plan for our lives. Beloved, God's faithful. And he's going to give us opportunities. And he's going to give us the resources that are necessary to make a difference wherever we are. You know, a lot of people start kind of turning off when we start talking about serving others. Most churches, the, the, the economy of a church life is 80% of the work is done by 20% of the people. And that's true even here. I'm not putting an onus on anybody. You know, you, you know everybody has places where they serve serving isn't necessarily shoveling the walks but serving is serving reaching out to others there's so many ways to serve we're not called to be sitters we're not called to be sitting in a pew and that's your job every sunday that that's not serving Let's pray. Father, you gave us Jesus as the example. And that example is so amazing. The way that you loved others and gave yourself for others is, is kind of like that North Star that's guiding us in this dark and weary world. Father, we ask that you would 
allow us, help us to be more like Jesus. To love more like Jesus. To lead like Jesus. And Father, to give like Jesus. Each of us has a place to serve, and Lord, you've already made that in, in each of us. And I pray that my brothers and sisters that are here and listening today would seek that. Seek where they can serve, how they can serve, who they can serve. With a cheerful heart, with a desire to love on you, to share the grace of a wonderful, loving God that sent his son to die for us. Father, we love you. We honor you. We praise your holy name. In the precious name of Christ Jesus, we pray. All God's children said, amen. And so we're going to sing this song, last song. You know what we're going to do, right? Sing a song. If you've got something to pray about, you can come on up and pray with us if you like. You can put the, put it on a prayer request if you're online or on the phone. If uh, if you want to join the church, you haven't done that, we would love to have you. My goodness, we need you. I already told you we needed more workers, right? Um, and if the biggest reason, the only reason really that, that I we even do this is that if you don't know Jesus, if you think, that, that, that your eternity is, is questionable. If you don't know that you're going to heaven, let's have a conversation. Because there is only one way. There is only one Jesus. There is only one door that is open to God. And that's through Christ. Don't wait. As the team comes to lead us. That's the trick, isn't it? To surrender all. That's one of my favorite songs. One of my favorite hymns of all time. Because that's the only way that, that, that we can serve. That's the only way that we can, can give ourselves to anybody else in the kingdom. With that heart is to surrender ourselves to Him. And that's your challenge this week. I want you to pray. I want you to pray where you can serve, even if you're already serving. Now, I'm not asking you to take on more, but sometimes God flips the script on us, right? Sometimes He wants us to do something else. Even though we've been doing something for a long time, even though we're comfortable in a particular place, it might be something else that He wants us to do, and we just keep pushing it back. And just know that if that's the case, His blessings are there. His power is there. His movement in our lives is there. Pray for Him to open up those doors. Those, the doors of your heart to see where you can serve. If it's a new ministry, come talk to me. If there's something that we need to do, because you know I'm all about that if it's Spirit-led. Come talk to me. Let's figure it out. Let's see how it works. Because there's nothing off of the table as long as we're able to keep our clothes on and, and we just we, we don't get worldly. Okay? Got to keep it right. Can you do that? I know that you can. God bless you. I love you. Call me if you need me. Please. <clears throat> Have a beautiful week. Ellen, would you close for us? Sure. Peace. Father, we love you so much, and we're just so thankful for Pastor Mark and just um, the sermon you gave us him today, Father. We just um, we know that you don't call the perfect, and if that were so, Father, none of us would be able to serve at all. I remember um, stories in the Bible like Moses, 
a stutterer. You called him to speak on behalf of you to save his people. You, um, you saved the adulterous woman, and um, she went and she told everyone she knew about you, Father Saul, who, um, who persecuted believers. You gave him a new chapter. You gave him a new name, Father, and you changed his name to Paul, and he did so much, Father, for the kingdom. And um, so there is none of us sitting in these pews right now that doesn't have a service, that doesn't have a calling to do something for you, because we're not perfect, but you didn't call us to be perfect, and we are so thankful for that. We're thankful for your love and your grace that you give us every day, Father, and we just pray that we can show grace to others. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.